Our next session will be by Jeff Weiss, an introduction to Dave Lyons' amazing utility Nifty List. Thanks, Jeff. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, so uh, this session, I'll be talking about Dave's Lion, uh, Dave Lyons' Nifty List uh, that uh, he uh, initially released as uh, shareware. He has since uh, reclassified it as freeware years ago. And uh, so it's a great tool for Apple IIgs development, um, development and just understanding your system as a whole. Um, my first uh, interaction with Dave Lyons was uh, right around uh, System 6.01 release. Um, there was rumors uh, that uh, that was going to be the last release of GSOS. Obviously, it turned out it was. And uh, I'm thinking, well, you know, there's one way to ensure that there'll be another release is if you send bug reports of 601. So in my, uh, 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 what's the word I was looking for? Um, idealistic youth, I said, ah, I'll just you know, send bug reports. That means Apple will have more bug reports, so they have to release a new version. And Dave was very uh, cordial when I sent bug reports to him. Uh, I said, thank you. I'll you know, add it to DTS. Um, I, my knowledge of Apple II GSs was not anywhere close to where it is today, and um, you know, it's, you know, I, I would like to say I knew nothing at that time. And but still, he was very cordial, treated me just like a, uh, a, a any professional, uh, like a, a, a professional in the field. And um, I really want to say thank you, Dave, um, and uh, uh, much appreciation. And um, he was someone who I looked up to at the time, and. Uh, it's great that, that we have the software still, and uh, it's still useful today. Great. Um, so I'm, also, I'm honored to uh, be talking about Nifty List uh, here at Kansas Fest 2012. So Nifty List is available uh, on multiple archive uh, 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 websites, um, CDs. I couldn't tell you where they all are. If you Google for niftylist.shk, you'll find it. I believe it's something like Nifty List 3.4. Um, it's a full archive with the uh, binaries. Um, I can show a quick or binaries documentation, etc. And bring a window up here. I can show uh, some of the contents that come after you uncompress it. I'll do it under uh, host OS, not under GS OS environment, since I never did copy the archive onto my uh, GS environment. And I'm a little bit to bring up a, uh, a uh, folder window. I need to find myself. Here we go, home folder. And I realize that you can't see what I'm doing, but bear with me. All right, so uh, these are some of the uh, files and folders in the archives. Um, we have the Nifty List manual, which is pretty much what I'll be walking through, more or less. Uh, through the presentation, um, since um, it's hard to uh, provide some contrived examples of um, things to do in Nifty List, I will ac accept um, suggestions from the audience of things to do, things to you know try do, um, and you know get a deeper understanding of how to leverage Nifty List in um, understanding the 2GS and, and uh, development and debugging and whatnot. Uh, one of the cool things about Nifty List that it allows for uh, third-party module support. I'll be talking a little bit more about that um, as we go on. And there's documentation and example code. Uh, looks like there's example code as well for developing uh, third-party extensions. So Nifty List doesn't have to be locked down to what was provided. Um, it can be extended as well. And, um, and real quickly, you can see some of the files that are part of, part of Nifty List. Uh, you got the CDA, you got some modules, and then there's a templates, which actually not sure what certain what it is, but all the documentations with the archive, so um, that can be uh, identified pretty quickly. All right. <clears throat> so within the two GSO, GSO within the GSOS environment, uh, real quickly show uh, where stuff gets installed. Uh, there is no uh, Apple installer that comes with uh, Nifty List, so I just manually dragged uh, uh, files to where they belong in the system. Everything will go into your uh, boot drive system desk accessories, 
So we have the nifulus.cda. Uh, we have some of the mod nifulus modules. You can prove that it is by doing um, an info on the file. It says a nifulus module. So you got uh, the big B, which stands for Big Brother. You have goodies, green mod. And I also have one more uh, nifulus module on my system. Uh, this does not come with Nifulus IR module, comes with the IR uh, tool that was provided by Apple Computers. So this is a perfect example of a third of a third party module written by Apple, but it's third party from the Nifty list. Uh, I hate to say, say the word application, but the Nifulus CDA. And I believe I've run across at least one other third party module, <coughs> excuse me, as well. Um, I, I don't have it, so I don't recall where, where uh, what it is, where it can be found. But um, but this documentation should write more uh, for those who are so inclined. All right. Um, oh, the, oh, I forgot one more thing. There's one more file of that comes with Nifty List that you, that you have to make sure you, that you also install in your Just Accessories directory is the endlist.data. So the endless.data uh, is a uh, text file that, uh, reading through the list that I identified through the, through the file here, uh, is the Prodos 8, uh, Prodos, it has a list of addresses, um, addresses or, or, or some identification number for Prodos 8, Prodos 8 calls, Prodos 16 calls, uh, APW or Orca shell calls, GSOS, GSOS, the OS calls, uh, tool calls, and GSBug, um, which uses a tool set number of calls, uh, the user tools that the Apple DDS provided, uh, Bank E1 vectors, Bank E0 vectors, uh, would, uh, also includes uh, some calls for the Davix uh, Protoss 8. Uh, Unix-like shell that Dave Lyons wrote called Davix. Uh, you have the I/O registers in the um, uh, for your slots in the um, e either in Bank zero one E zero or E one the C X X X bank. Uh, we have the monitor entry waypoints um, in the firmware. Uh, if you look in the GSOS, it's um, Bank FF. And then it's uh, F800 through FFFF uh, uh, bytes. The bank of one vectors for GSOS for the system service calls. Uh, there's nifty list service calls, uh, resource types, uh, OS errors for GSOS, uh, Protoss A specific and GS and, 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 and error numbers that are common between the two, toolbox errors, hypercard GS callbacks, and request procedures for the system. Finder control panel. So that's all in here. We'll talk about some of this stuff as we go along as well. All right. So to access Nifulist, it's a it's a CDA, and as we have learned earlier in Kansas Fest, uh, control uh, the CDAs are in the uh, you go to Control Open Apple Escape. We have Nifulist in the list. <coughs> Uh, hit return to get in, and we get into the uh, Nifty List CDA. Um, it doesn't make any sense. I talked about in my session to you know perhaps make a CDA to you know make it look and feel like Apple's uh, CDAs, but this is a uh, a interactive shell environment, so it doesn't make sense to use that type of style. Um, so uh, right. we can so very so uh, Dave made this tool very, very easy to use if you don't read the manual when I first accessed, uh, when I first started using it. Um, I didn't even, I may not even have even known that there was a, a uh, readme for the, for the CDA. So install it and, and there's right there in the first line says question mark for help. So we do question mark for help and we have a nice full screen of um, uh, the commands we can use. Uh, so it's uh, basically one letter, uh, one character command uh, to do different things. Um, so the first, so question mark is shows this list. Uh, I'll f first talk about um, some of the help functionality, and then we're going to dive into um, what we can do with Nifty List. 
Uh, so we can see here letters um, where, for example, um, well, I'll actually do S, I'll do S first. So S, we can see down the miscellaneous section on the left-hand side says S various status info. Um, if I want to find out more about what this command can, can do, I do question mark S. So you do help on, so it says up here, you know, use question mark followed by the character you want to use. So question mark S, and it says S status, print memory uses statistics, statistics and ROM version of Pro.16 or GS, what's GS, I'll get you this, so I don't have to um, mumble over all the words there. Uh, but it provides status information about uh, your environment your, and the OS that, you're, that you are in. Um, I'll go ahead and let's run the S command to see what it looks like. Um, and we can see at the top of the screen that uh, uh, using the get name call, the, we're in the finder. Uh, we're using GSOS 4.2, and we got some information about the system. We see some prefixes that have been defined uh, uh, by the application so far. And down below, we see the ROM version that this uh, system is, uh, uh, information about the RAM. And at the very, very bottom, there's some information about the nifty list if you want to uh, know where nifty list is in memory and, uh, and for NL services where the uh, request procedures are for nifty list. Uh, and the nifty list ID is the memory ID for nifty list. All right. Um, so looking at more of the help commands, uh, well, before I do, yeah. Um, so, so going back to the question mark, you see these are all the commands built into nifty list. As I had uh, mentioned earlier, there is a module support for nifty list. Uh, this screen doesn't show the modules. So let's real quickly look at uh, the module. So we can do uh, question mark backslash as it's uh, mentioned up here, question mark backslash to list extra commands. So we do question mark backslash, hit return. And what we're going to do is through this is going to show all the modules and all the commands and all the modules. So within Big Brother, uh, we have add CS, show us, show CS, del CS, etc. Uh, this is um, a memory uh, manager uh, related, uh, uh, I hate to use the word tools, but uh, uh, little commands, utilities to uh, get more information about the memory manager um, or memory management of your system. Okay, return to see the next module. We have goodies, which uh, uh, I'll just say sort of miscellaneous uh, stuff. Um, as a general term, green module uh, is uh, if you have the finder loaded. Uh, these are some of the commands that you can. Uh, uh, these are um, the messages that you can uh, uh, contact the mess uh, to contact with the finder to uh, ask information to send information. Um, can help with troubleshooting if you uh, are writing a finder extra, um, or want to find out more information about your finder environment. And then we have, and then because I have the IR, excuse me, the IR, the IR module also installed, we see those commands as well. Uh, I had, do have IR also installed on the system. Um, I can verify that by, and then to run the command, you do backslash and the command. So IR info will say that I have IR installed, uh, where, what uh, the user ID is and uh, what version it is. So, um, uh, a brief example of how to use a, uh, uh, a command in a module. And if we want to find out more information about a command, it's question mark, backslash, and a, and a uh, command. So if we want to go look at the goodies, there was an HCGS, if I remember that correctly. And I did remember that correctly. And um, it will say display a hypercard GS callback name. Um, let's see what that looks like. I can, it says, we can do that way. So it, uh, it does nn slash or backslash or backslash, right? So zero backslash hcgs, and we can see all of the hypercard callbacks. And these hyper call, hypercard callbacks um, information is all located in that endless dot data file. Um, so some of these um, commands will show uh, the the raw information within the uh, uh, the endless dot data file. All right. Um, just so one more uh, showing that I ran the S in uh, when I ran the, S, the status in the finder, 
I'm going to go now run a different command, run a different uh, program, and see what the status looks like there. So very quickly, I have Orc on the desktop. You can go into control app, go into the nifty list, look at the status, and um, we can see that uh, after, since I'm running an emulator, it's running at several hundred megahertz, and we look at the top of the screen and we start seeing, we don't see where it says the, of what version of GSOS we're having. And the reason why we don't see it is because the prefixes, there's a lot more prefixes that, that have been defined. So now we're at a point here of, of how do I you know, scroll up? Well, we're in a text screen and uh, with the nifty list, there is no uh, scrolling within the text environment. There's no equivalent of page or shift page up, page shift down. For those who are familiar using a Linux console, uh, to scroll up and down um, within the text screen. So uh, nifty list, uh, the, the solution in nifty list uh, is uh, th that the way, I, the way I interpret this is it's treated that every output works like more. Um, you can do space to stop and, and another key, or I hit return usually to, um, to let it continue scrolling. A space would also um, do the next line. Uh, so, I but if running accelerated, it's uh, you can't too many lines will scroll by before you know the spacebar will stop. So I do have to slow the computer down to a slower speed. So I'm going to slow this down to one megahertz, and then look at status. And it's almost slow enough to read, but it's still too fast. So I hit the spacebar um, before it scrolled off the screen, and now we can see more information about. Um, uh, the status of uh, the uh, the output of the S command. So we can see get name is Orca, which is exactly the application we're in, uh, and everything else was pretty much um, well. We knew what version of GS we what version of GSOS we were in, but there could be times when there's a lot more prefixes to find, and you want to see uh, more information at the top. So um, understanding the uh, the interface to uh, hit space to pause, and we hit return to continue on. I want to speed this up just so I don't have to stick with uh, one megahertz uh, for a lot of use. Um, within a real 2GS, if you're running it at fast speed, the 2.8 megahertz, um, this, uh, most people are coordinated enough to hit space you know, before things scroll off the screen so you can still um, stop and look at something before it scrolls away. Uh, 2.8 megahertz isn't fast enough for it to, for it to just fly by. Uh, there's no reason to actually slow a 2GS down to slow speed to use Nifty List under most normal use. Um, an accelerator system, it's a little tough to uh, pause it before things scroll off. Um, it takes some skill, but um, slowing down, getting to run the least fast speed uh, pretty much still uh, will be effective and works. Any questions so far? Okay, great. All right, so um, earlier in the day, I got a special request of how to, uh, uh, one of the so Nif there's a lot of things in Nifty List, and we haven't talked about um, all of the things. I mean, like if you hit the S for the uh, uh, sorry, hit the question mark to see the uh, the main screen, um, the help screen rather, uh, you can sort of get an idea of what the functionality of Nifty List is. And um, looking at the module names, some of the names are intuitive. Some of the names could be completely Greek because you, one may not know. How some of the internals of GSOS works, and when I first looked at some of the command, uh, looked at some of the module command names, I had no clue what those letters referred to at all. Um, you know, as one learns more about the system, it, it starts to make more sense of how it all works. Um, I'm, I'm don't, I don't think we'll have to go. I don't think we'll have time to go through every single module, but we'll spotlight certain ones. But it's more important to look at how to use, uh, how to leverage Nifty List um, in your environment. All right. So um, earlier, and so now we're trying to how I start how I start started this paragraph by saying I, I was I asked earlier today how to uh, identify uh, applications in memory. So I'm going to jump into that, um, and uh, well, then I'll ask um, if there's going to be any anything specific people want to see. Do those. Otherwise, we'll just walk through the Nifty List manual to look at the functionality as it was documented. All right. So let's see. I want to get out of Orca. And yes, I'm using Unix commands to get out because that's not a normal command. And um, all right, so I looking. So I have a bunch of examples that I have um, outlined in advance here of things to find. Ironically, um, these are some of the things that I have written 
uh, for the 2GS. Um, and of course, we can use other examples if there's specifics um, that attendees would like to see. So uh, one of the first things is I have written a couple tool sets and um, I would like to see if um, I like to see more about the manipulus. Let's say I was writing one and I want to troubleshoot something. So what? So um, when the system loaded, uh, well, let's go. Well, before I start saying things, let's go see how things work. So go to manipulus. And I should also uh, mention one or two things as we um, uh, work on this. So uh, within, uh, sorry, question mark. So in the help screen, we can see that there is a V command. To show versions, and this is show versions of tool sets. So I'm going to hit V without slowing things down, and um, oh, I thought it was going to go a bit uh, faster, um, or we'll start seeing more things. Uh, one of the things interesting to note is we see um, tool 36, and that's 36 hex, says Marinetti. So when Nifulus was written, was did Marinetti exist? Uh, I, that's sort of an awkward question to ask because we haven't defined, you know, dates of, or availability, but we'll argue that Nifulus uh, 3.4 was released shortly after the release of 601 um, in 1993. So if, with that knowledge, now I ask the question, does it make sense for Marinetti to be in this list? Uh, the answer is absolutely not. Um, one of the things that Richard Bennett did when he uh, released Marinetti was to provide a, a set of lines that one could manually add into your endless.data file so you can use nifty list to troubleshoot Marinetti. So, um, and since uh, Richard did that, for the, tool, for the two tool sets that I released as system tools, I also released in the documentation, here are the lines that you want to add in nifty list so you can use uh, the, the tools that I've written, the tools that I have written within nifty list. Um, so this is a, 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 a Something you have, to, you have to add manually afterwards. It does not come included with Nifty List. Uh, so, um, bringing that up, um, we're not going to look at the Marinetti uh, tool set, but we want to look at the ones that ones that I have written. Um, so now we look at a new command here. That oops, yeah, I got the right S. So a new command. We use the double quote. The double quote is search question mark. I'm going to use the uh, double quote command to find our partial name. The uh, the find is actually going to be looking through the endless.data file. Uh, so one of the tool sets I wrote is a hash tool. So if I just quote for look search for hash, I find all I find the lines that I added in the uh, endless.data file um, about the hash tool. Um, the first column is the tool number. So zero 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 eight zero is not a tool number, but that's just, this is just saying the finding that this is going to be the hash tool. And then 01 is the boot init. We talked about this during tool sets. The second column is the address and memory where this call is located. Since every single call says zero, that means the tool is not loaded, which means we can't find in memory. So um, I now I have to. So what I have to do now is actually load this tool so we can start looking for it in memory. Um, because the finder doesn't use my hash tool, that's why it's not loaded. If we were looking uh, at a tool that was loaded, we can look at the output of V again. And um, anything with a plus sign in the second column next to the tool number means that tool is loaded. Um, and we can verify that by looking at, uh, so I'll do, uh, no, I forgot how I wanted to demo that. Yes, um, I need to, so I want to cheat by doing text edit. Um, now, why did that work? Oh, probably, thank you, thank you, it's TE, yes. And we'll, of course, we'll find all the other matches of TE, so TE, uh, we'll do startup. Uh, the, tool, the tool call is, is uh, TE, we have to use the name of the tool, which is TE, like, startup. So th that's what we're going to be doing, and there's TE startup, I don't have to type the whole search, it's, it searches the first, well, it searches the whole entire string. So we can see that uh, TE startup is in memory, um, and we know that function call is in, or that, that routine is at memory location, bank 13, byte A9. Um, so uh, this proves how we use this command. So now for the tool set that I wrote, I have to first load the tool. Um, 
So now adding a new command here, question mark, we use the underscore, which is uh, calling to, uh, running tool calls. So with a nifty list, we can actually run tool, call, tool calls. So the tool call to load a tool is load one, well, there's a couple ways, but I'm going to use load one tool, uh, which is the name is exactly what the function does. So I want to find out more about how to use it. I do uh, quote load one tool, and I see that the command, I see load one tool right here, and it provides, it tells me the arguments needed for load one tool. I have a tool set number, and I have minimum version, minimum version. And uh, because there's no special characters around this, uh, the pound sign is just a tool, uh, tool set number. I know both of those are at 16 bit values. So I can do underscore load one tool. And I, uh, well, Niftilis will take care of making an 8 bit, 16 bit value, 32 bit value, 24 bit value, whatever. Um, you just pass in numbers. So my tool set number is 80 hex, and comma minimum version, I'll just say one. So I don't have to care what version it really is and load one tool, and let's see if my tool is loaded. I hit B, and sure enough, uh, my pass tool 80 is, or 80 hex, is now loaded. Uh, Nifty list will also, you know, try to t uh, find out information about all the tools um, up to that number. And because there's um, no uh, standard system tools between roughly 38 ASCII, or 38 decimal, shoot, no, I guess that's hex. 38 hex to 80 hex, um, it's pretty much all blank, and then we have the hash tool, um, and we can verify that. Uh, so, it, so the plus sign, or the minus sign means it's in memory. So well, having in the list means it's in memory. The minus means it has not been started. Uh, we can verify that it is in memory by doing uh, hash startup. T, uh, so look at 0180t, which is the tool number. No, 8001, 8001t to look at the tool number. Um, no, it's 0180. Got the backwards. 180. I can't think of the spot. So we see that um, there is a memory address for it, so we know it's memory. And then I can uh, just call, uh, if I want to verify what the parameter for hash startup is. And that's why if I hit one command, it scrolls by really fast, which is why I like the fast emulators. So hash startup. And we see that the command is hash startup, no parameters to pass. So I do underscore hash startup. And um, I can do B, and I see the plus sign next to it, so I know it's now started. Um, it's sort of an optional step. I didn't have to do that. The whole point was I needed to find it in memory, which is what, uh, what the request was. So to look at things in memory, question mark, list, or help, uh, we use the I command to show info on, on um, I by ID. So um, I'm going to do this the long way to get through this. Um, I actually found out more about some tricks um, earlier today, sort of in the manual here. Uh, but I've learned a long way, so um, this is how I normally do things, and I apologize that this is more clunky than how it uh, can really, how it should really be. So uh, let's let's do question mark I to find out usage. Um, oh, so information is there. I should have just read that. Um, I probably there's probably some stuff above it that I um, I skipped over, but some of the examples, which is the most important thing, is one zero one i zero i, etc. Zero i is going to is basically a catch all which says show all um, allocated memory areas. Areas, um, and so let's go ahead and do that. So I do zero i, and we can see all of the. Uh, it's all, if you allocate a handle of, of allocates memory, um, there's handles that associates um, um, all of these uh, malloc's. And it basically just walks through all the handles. And so uh, within GSOS, it is just a linked list. So if you have a thousand a thousand uh, mallets, uh, and you have to get to the bottom, you're going through you know a thousand uh, entries to get to yours. That's just the way it works. Um, there's no uh, uh, current, the system is not designed to have any better algorithm. Uh, so it's going to be n. Um, up, basically, it's an O n. I think I did that right. Big um, so now we have to find my tool. So I just, you know, did a zero I, and there's a big giant list. Of, oh, wouldn't it be great if I can do like a pipe grep? Well, we don't have that. Um, so the so what I have done to um, so let's do a question mark guys. See if we see the shortcut in there. 
So let's look through here and see if there's any tools. Let's, because I know I have a tool set, let's see if we can, you know, figure out if we can just list just the tool sets from all these handles. And sure enough, we have four. So that four is actually the first digit, so it'll be 4,000i. So if I do 4,000i, now I see all the tool calls, and still there's a lot of stuff, but um, I do see that there's a couple, couple of three, one twenty or four. I guess I have four segments in the file. Four, one twenty. I think I have a little bit more than that. But um, from here, I can see that I have a memory address of forty eighty. So if I do forty eighty i, I have okay. I have four. Um, so here now I have to guess where would my tool have started in memory. Um, anybody want to guess where my tool started? The first segment of the file. Um, I don't really know, but if I was to make a guess, I would make the guess is going to be one that is at the bank boundary. So I can do one five zero zero zero, and then I can do a semicolon. Um, I'll do semicolon H. Uh, oops, I better show why I'm going to do semicolon H. So now going back to help, we see some help. We see semicolon. It means display info from address. So I do if, uh, question mark semicolon, and I have a lot of. Uh, uh, basically, these are the two characters. This is a two-character command. Um, look at the list. We do uh, some some of the ones I use a lot is slash uh, semicolon a is ASCII dump, semicolon h is h, h dump, and uh, those are the main ones that I tend to use. But it's got some other cool things in here where uh, you can look look at one of the things we'll look at is the class of accessory header since we've been talking about PBAs here at uh, KFS. We've got some GUI stuff looking at Windows and Quick Draw ports. Um, so there's a lot of so it really dives down into uh, a lot of areas of the system to uh, you know get better understand, understanding of a running application. All right, so um, remember the memory address for that, right? Four zero four D eighty. Oh, I have to go back to this, right? Fifteen. That bank fifteen. That's what I want to do. So I do this. Look at a semicolon H to see if it looks like my looks like a tool header, and. Um, it doesn't look like one, so I'll do 15, I'll explain in a moment why I know that, because in a, in a tool set, you have a bunch of, you have a table of all the of the tools, where you'll be uh, memory, uh, memory pointers to memory addresses, and this, these the spikes here don't look, don't, don't, look, don't look like memory addresses. I would expect to see, you know, uh, in a, a byte of, uh, in a block, uh, okay, a block of four addresses, uh, 0015 for um, the, the bank. And I don't see it. So um, I can verify this by looking by using the uh, L command, just like you find in the monitor for disassemble, and it is pure code. So I know that block is not the right one. So let's try the first one on the list here BFE5F, BF e -F -E, no, BFE5F. If I read this correctly, oops, backspace. And then I do semicolon H and does that look like? Maybe I'll just continue through the blocks to find it, and I don't want to waste time since I'm not finding it quickly enough. All right, so uh, this basically shows all the memory blocks used by a tool set. Uh, now we'll look at. Uh, let's well, since I don't have any, any of my tool sets loaded, uh, let's go look at something like IPC Spy, and oops, I'll go back to Nifty List. Hopefully, all IPC Spy isn't going to be too clunky to find. Um, so I go back to uh, question mark I to find the CDA, CDAs, or just accessories to CDA, so it'd be 5000i. And here we can see that's going to be um, new, desk, new desk accessories and classic desk accessories are on the list. So the list is big, slow the system down. And I can hit up arrow to redo the last command. It has history. Um, Nif uh, Dave actually put a joke in Nifty List, which, I, which is pretty funny. If I scroll all the way to the very top, of the, oh, it's not scroll, but if I back up arrow all the way to the very top of the history, um, apparently there must have been a bug at one point in time, uh, uh, which Andy Nicholas must have, Andy Nichols would have, could have told Dave, saying, you know, something might have broken, and uh, Dave says, Andy, still has history. So this, apparently there's an in joke, which I don't know what it is, but um, it's, it's still there. So uh, I slowed it down, so 5000i. And then we hit space to look for this, and then we want to look for IPC spy. So I see IPC spy here, 
got uh, the memory I've got the ID 500C. I can escape. Uh, I've got to mention this. Escape will stop a list. So 500C. I. We can see what memory handles it has. It has a bunch, and I would guess the address 214AC. And let's. I'll. I'll. I'll just do. And because I know it's a CDA, the couple. The first couple bytes of a CDA is a string with the as a Pascal string with the name of the CDA. So I do something call an A, and that doesn't look like it's it. Oh, it's only B bytes long, so that wasn't couldn't have been it. So of those, that's the largest block. So it's B A E B nine. I wasn't paying attention to that. B A E B nine. But this is what happens when you uh, do things on the fly. Um, I'll verify this by looking at uh, uh, A for the ASCII characters, and I see uh, a pa I see what looks like a Pascal string. Um, there's a, a unreadable byte and words and a word or uh, letters rather, so that looks realistic. And uh, I can always do an H to verify that, and sure enough, that does look like a Pascal string. And I would do some colon C to look at the C D A head C D A header, and yes. Um, uh, we now have verified what the uh, address of your um, start and shutdown is. All right, now I don't know why I started doing this. All right, talking about um, finding and running process in memory. Uh, and so now, we've, now we know the start routine. So now we can do B, A, E, D, E, and uh, L. And now we can start to assemble uh, in memory here. And yeah, that looks, that's still readable. Uh, I'm sort of hoping that it might swap between 8-bit and 16 mode, and we can see how we have to. Uh, of course, this has not been tested to show how we do things, but at some point you may find somewhere in, in a listing that uh, it's uh, with switching to an 8-bit mode or 16-bit mode. And looking at the menu here, let me read this back up again. We have Control E and Control N. To quickly with a nifty list um, change to 8 bit or 16 bit uh, for um, you know looking at disassembly listings. All right, so that was uh, a CDA. Um, any questions so far? Anything that people want to specifically see? Um, is this useful for people? We'll pretend it is. Uh, let's see what time is it. And I'm, I'm finishing at 3:15, Ken. So I have about 15 minutes. Two, well, my my time's in Eastern time, so if I say three three fifteen, it matches my clock. Uh, so we'll now look at a running control panel, and I'm surprised that um that this is actually taking the amount of time that it is. Uh, but I'm still going through all the other interesting commands in Nifty List, so hopefully this will um, be useful for people. So let's look at the control panel that I wrote. So control panel ah. Before I do this, right, so I'm in Nifty, let's go back to Nifty List. We'll open up Escape. And we'll go look at a uh, helpful item on the control panel. Uh, control panels, I think, is two. I'll, I'll, if this doesn't help, then I'm going to look at something else. So, 2000i is showing nothing. So, right now, we don't know if this is actually appropriate or not. Is this a control for a, uh, like a widget, or is this a control panel? Um, I actually read the manual, I would know, but I didn't, so I don't know. Uh, so, another way of looking is, um, so I, I mentioned before that I'm running, limit, yes, I'm full speed. So, I, with running 0i, you see a lot of stuff. Um, when we use uh, the, the, the examples, uh, the, well, what, so we, the, the syntax I've been using so far to find memory is based upon a type of, um, because it's, it's, you know, we're using the, the first uh, nibble, no, the first byte. The first nibble of that 16 bit value, or the highest nibble, I guess we should, we should call that. Um, and that defined, you know, the kind of, um, uh, I don't use application, but the kind of um, memory ID it is of a tool or whatnot. So looking at other bits of this, we can look at the last byte. And look at more information. So if I do one i, it's going to show all the memory ID, memory IDs that end with the number one. If I do two i, all the memory IDs that end with the number two. And then turn up turns out here that I 
and I just, you know, keep incrementing numbers. So I do 2i, 3i, 4i, until I find, you know, some keyword that I'm looking for. So the keyword I'm looking for is control panel, and it just happens to be in 2. Uh, that's one thing I did prepare for. And I see it, and I all I see is that there's a control panel. But, um, you know, that's similar to the stack. If you think about a control panel, there should be a bunch of resource ports. I don't see any resource. Uh, resource on memory allocated for resources, and I don't see you know n number of, of control panels open. So uh, the implication is that the control panel NDA is loaded in, in memory, but none of the control panels are, and that's exactly what it is. So we know that the control panel is memory because it's in the list here, and this is this view here is because I have hierarchic installed. And if I go to my time zone, now we go back to Nifty List. And I look at the 2i, I see a lot of stuff now. That's because my time zone has a lot of resource forks. So we can see the resource file that was open, and we can do R to look at the resource file, and we can see that, um, oops, I must have, must have been closed. Like, whatever, so it's closed now. But you would have seen um, the resource file number if it was open, FFFE. Uh, these are the system resources, so it's using, I don't know. Something was used, I'm using something in the system resource file. Uh, so, because of so many resources, um, and that I, there was a lot of resources in that uh, control panel, I uh, needed to slow it down again. So, going back to 2i, and now we have to find where in this list is um, my control panel. And um, I sort of eyeball the sizes of uh, memory blocks to see if I can find it, and I thought my Control panel was about 400 in size, but it could be the 6CO. So let's go see if 6CO is the 6CO size one is. So it's 14265 slash 0.8. And that doesn't look like it. I'm not going to go waste time with that, so I'll just look at the one that I did find, and we'll do the, uh, I can't remember why, I wanted to show the semicolon, uh, semicolon, what was the control panel one? Um, oh, that's right, is that the tildes? No, it's not there. Um, well, the point, I guess the point of this exercise is how to find control panels and brings more stuff up, and, um, and at this point, I just have to search through stuff to find more things. All right. Um, and I'll go back to this uh, tildes in a minute. And now let's look at a running application. Go away. I'll just want to keep this back up. So let's go look at the, meg the, mem the mega memory tester that I wrote. So we have something else to other than the finder memory. That's why. I mean, I might have typed something in wrong along the way to make memory unhappy. Nifty list is uh, is very stable by itself, so that hang there is not because of Nifty list. There's something else you saw that my application was what uh, didn't load. And the application does work fine, but there's something else in memory that uh, it didn't like. So I've got the application running, and um, nifty list. If I do s, I can see that I have it running, and I couldn't remember if I had any information here of the running app, and I don't. So um, looking for the running app, I pretty much get just walk down the list. So two i, three i, four i, five i, six i, seven i. Can't remember if there's a fast way of doing this, but this is what I normally do. Oops, nine i, then a i because there's the text, c i. E I, E I, E I, F I. I didn't think it was this high up when I tested this before. Uh, should be applications here of one. So, um, 1000 I, and there's mega memory test. So, um, we'll look at the first one, address, oh yes, because I have it running in uh, bank, in the low banks, um, 
sure it's the one zero eight hundred. And if I L that, yeah, that's it. Or, well, I'm sure that's it. That's that's some of my code. So, whatever. You got two blocks. Figure figure out the block where your segment that you want to troubleshoot is, and um, you can disassemble from there. All right. Uh, go quick, mega. Quick this. And you have to go through that sequence of time. Like once it crashes, then you go. Okay. Yeah. Else. Um, that's a great point. If you so, because this is how I do it, doesn't mean that this is may not be the most efficient way. But this is what I've been using for lack of any other way of doing it. But the cool thing about when your system crashes and and you have to reboot, everything's going to be in memory in the same place from that point on. So if you you know crash reboot. From that point on, everything's going to be in the same memory. So if it's still, and if you don't make changes, and then it crashes again, well, you reboot, and then you just keep the same memory addresses that you recorded last time. Say, so write it down a piece of paper because if you reboot, you're going to lose it from nifty, nifty list. Doesn't save history among sessions um, or among reboots. Uh, so then you just go straight to the memory, and then you can, you know, troubleshoot more easily from there. So yeah, that's a great question. I want to make sure that was brought up. So. Um, I think I covered looking at applications there. Any questions so far? Did I mention something that's going to do something after I rebooted? I can't remember. All right. So no one's, since I can't remember, no one else can remember, then um, we can plow forward. What time is it? 3 or 7. All right. Uh, remember, there's something I wanted to do. Look at it. Oh, Tildes. Let's go look at Tildes since I had uh, started. I teased you guys with that. So. We see tilde is uh, display a list, so we do question mark tilde, and um, it, it says display miscellaneous info, and it shows, shows the list. If you just do tilde by itself, it also shows the list. Shows the same output. Great. Um, so if you can't remember which uh, tilde character you want to use, tilde by itself, and then it gives you the list. Well, that's what I typically do. Uh, so looking at tildes, we can look at the heartbeat uh, tasks. Um, what uh, what uh, the message center, uh, things that are listening on message center, uh, the uh, quick reports, uh, the scrap manager, scrap manager, which I think is the uh, uh, where you cut, 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 copy, paste, and the list of windows. So if I do tilde W uh, within the finder, there is actually a hidden window for trash that's um, open. All the, actually, it's uh, it's around all the time. It's not open because that's why you have the brackets around it. But um, well, it's open, but it's not visible. Rephrase that. Uh, so we know with the brackets, it's not visible, but it is an open window. Um, if we open up our windows in the Finder, you know, then the list will uh, increase. I think it was a semicolon W will give us window information. We can verify that. Yes. So if we go look at the trash, we can look at the addresses of at the trash address is 11E56, semicolon W, and we can see uh, all the quick draw information about the window. So uh, Nifty List really dives down um, into what this uh, information about the system. Uh, you can see all the memory addresses used by uh, all the different elements of the, uh, the window here. Um, yeah, and I'm skipping some of the details of this. This is all documented in the reference manuals. And then often with this, you have to you know dive down to more further, further into detail. But as just a brief overview, uh, get this high-level overview of your system. Um, looking at some of the other stuff in Tilda, uh, heartbeat. So if we look at the heartbeat list, uh, we see the few things with the heartbeat. Um, uh, uh, GS Bug has a heartbeat. Um, the five and a quarter inch uh, device driver has a heartbeat. Uh, when that was uh, implemented in 6.0. That's being used to auto detect if there's a is it detect if there's a floppy in the drive or there's something like that. They added a heartbeat for um, making some more uh, uh, coolness happen within the Finder. Uh, let's see, tilde M. So these are all the different um, uh, uh, things that are um, listening or um, I think that I think they're they can all accept uh, message requests. And um, that's stuff. So usually this can be ignored until you're ready to you know start programming um, 
with the terminology. Uh, request procedures. Or, yes, IPC breach. All right, and what was the other? Anything else interesting there? Oh, I can see what's uh, we have the clipboard. That was the term I was looking for. Clipboard is empty, and that's the list. Uh, so, anything else, else interesting? I'm sort of going to you know skip over uh, some of the address stuff. That is interesting, and you can always ask me questions after KFS. Um, they can find me on IRC on the 82 Central IRC channel. So, if there's questions about Nifty List, you know, hop aboard. Um, if, you don't, if I don't respond immediately, stay idle. I'll respond at some point. And um, uh, yeah, I, could, uh, I sort of use that as a queuing system, less so of you know immediate response. And uh, let's see. Let's, and, let's see what we got. Four minutes. So four minutes. We can look at some of the uh, modules. Oops, I'm doing this wrong. Now I forgot how I use command. Question. Uh, question mark backslash. Right. I can't think of a spot. So yeah. Big Brother, um, let's hit escape, backslash show CS. Um, okay, that was boring. Um, increase that, is that interesting? There's, it's, there's stuff there. I don't know, I don't use that one. I don't think I've ever used that one. So, let me backwards, here we go. Let's go to goodies. So goodies, uh, I'm sl slightly more familiar with. Um, we can see what's in the run queue, and the uh, Marinetti does have a run queue uh, in it, and uh, so I expect to see that. And we can see that there's at least one other file with a run queue. Um, what you know, if one's curious about it, you can you know start you know looking at the uh, the code and figure out what initialization file that is. See, backslash info. I remember that showed something interesting. Well, okay, well, as interesting as what version of the Nifty List you have and where it's located. Uh, backslash files. So these are all the files that are open in GSOS. Uh, now, I ran off, ran off the list. Let's see, go back and. Uh, great question, I don't know. Um, no clue. Caching, maybe? Or I have no idea. Let's see what release says. Nothing there. Um, if I want to see uh, uh, the list of OS, I'm not sure if this is errors or commands. No, it's just out. Interesting. That wasn't what I expected. That wasn't what I expected. Okay, let's go find out more about that. Oh, yeah. I saw that right. Uh, oh, display the call. So I have to do zero backslash OS to view the list of all the calls. And then if I type in the uh, uh, the call number, then it was actually showing me the actual call. Um, and this is actually, let's go ahead and like uh, only pull up something like uh, D info, a device driver info. So we do 202C, and this applies for many other things, not just this, uh, backslash OS. Um, you can you know, look, dive into details about tool calls. Um, but the neat thing about this is these are all the arguments uh, used by uh, the D info call. Uh, the at sign means that this is a pointer. Uh, the slash four means this is a four byte address. Otherwise, you assume it's a two byte address. Um, and everything. So that, that spotlights uh, what that's about. And I can't remember what a one byte is, but usually it's two or four bytes for argument size. Yeah, so if we pull up a tool call, um, an interesting tool call can be. Um, uh, what's, what do we have for rectangles? Uh, off the list. Um, dialog. Is that off the list too? Ah, good. Let's, uh, well, you can just see the list here. Um, so, this is also a good thing. Uh, the modal dialog. You pass it a, um, a pointer and it ha ends with colon and something else. This is the return address. So, this is a four byte return address, a re four byte return value from this function. Um, Make sure that this returns a pointer, etc. So, um, even if your G if your toolbox reference manual is not handy, and you want to get some uh, you know, idea of what this tool call is, Nifty List does give you a very very condensed, um, easy to uh, uh, read view of what this tool call can do. If we can understand what TDFR is, but um, 
the letters so are abbreviations to fit in a eighty column line of what the actual argument is. All right, I pretty much got my time. Any questions about anything that um, I haven't touched on? And you can always ask me later in KFest for any more uh, anything 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 else about Nifulist. Yes, yes, and I think the equal sign. Uh, no, it's equal. There's something here that translates. Uh, that equals evaluate, maybe. Uh, the, that's the man, manual talks about the evaluate commands. There's one of the commands. Question mark. Thanks. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. Yes. So uh, the evaluate command can show you some more information about how to uh, pass in strings and whatnot. And if you read through the manual, you can find out you can. Uh, Run commands together. I was very much only running one command at a command at a time, but you know you can have toolbox calls, call toolbox calls, and um, and it will just work just as if you were writing a program um, or writing a program. Great, thank you very much. Yes. Yes. It's still freeware. Yes, um, I did not. Ask, I I didn't think about when when I was asked by a KFS attendee to talk about Nifty List. I didn't even think to even contact Dave to say, "Is there anything you want me to talk about this to KFS?" Um, I didn't even think about that until just about an hour ago. So um, I was. The assumption is everything is status quo from what has been documented in the past. But yes, it is freeware. I didn't didn't mention that earlier. So it's a great tool. Use it. Um, uh, it's one of the best ones.